expected points, captaincy, clean sheet odds, and the best players to buy. This video has got all the information you need to know ahead of game week three. So I'm going to start the video then by going through the top players for expected points by position. And like I do every week, I'm going to look at game week three in isolation and then have a look at the remaining, well, the next three game weeks, basically. Goalkeepers wise, the top goalkeeper for game week three, according to the Fantasy Football Hub expected points. By the way, if you want to sign up to Fantasy Football Hub, there's a link in the description below. Raya is the top goalkeeper, followed by Pickford, Flecken, Edison, Muric of Ipswich. I think Pickford and Muric are kind of boosted up probably by the fact that they make a decent amount of saves cells and martinez are in there as well so then a view of the next three game weeks martinez and villa have a really nice fixture run actually for the next sort of four or five fixtures and he is actually the top goalkeeper in the game for expected points for that period of time i think he offers quite a good balance of clean sheet odds from having good quality fixtures coming up but also I think he's going to make a decent amount of saves too. So for me, he kind of ticks all the boxes of a good FPL goalkeeper. Edison, I think the clean sheet odds are pretty good for his remaining games. Likewise, David Raya. David Raya actually seems to be making a few more saves than he did last season. Whether that trend continues, I guess we'll see. Allison, I think, is always just a good balance keeper. Liverpool, you know, they tend to keep a fairly decent amount of clean sheets pretty much every season. And Allison gets a lot of saves. That's just kind of what he does. Pickford, Murich, and McCarthy of Southampton are up there as well. Defenders up next then. And the top defender for game week three for expected points is Ben White, followed by Gabriel, Guardiola, Saliba. Got David Ryan in there. That's a bit of a mistake. Alexander Arnold and Robertson. So your top defenders basically are a mixture of Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool. And over the next three game weeks, the top defenders, we've got Trent. Robertson, Guardiola, Ben White, Gabriel and Virgil van Dijk. So a mixture again of Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal defenders. We've also got Martinez working his way in that defenders list as well. But yeah, those are your top defenders for the next three. On to the midfielders then. Salah, Saka, Palmer, Eze, De Bruyne, Odegaard and Son are your top midfielders for game week three. No real surprise, I don't think, in terms of a lot of the names there. I would say Salah, Saka and Palmer are the three best midfielders in the game, right, with the exception of maybe De Bruyne and Foden in there. Foden, if he were to start, I'd put him up there as well as one of the top midfielders, but I guess that's the question really with Foden. Will he start in game week three? You know, he was ill for game week two. Unfortunately, will he recover in time for game week three? If he does, I think he's a really nice option and also... I don't think many people are going to have him, particularly engaged managers, because he started off the season being injured. Yeah, I think he's got a good chance of playing in game week three and could be a good option. Cole Palmer's just done really well in game week two against Wolves and three assists and a goal in that game. Still proven his worth and I still think 10.5 million is, is decent value for him. And also, we'll get on to Chelsea in a second, but Chelsea have a really, really nice upcoming fixture run. Eze, I think owners have been really unlucky. I believe he hit the crossbar again in game week two. So I still think he's got a chance of doing really well. Kevin De Bruyne, I really like him as an option as well. I would say his returns are more weighted towards assists than goals, but his minutes look good at the moment, at least for City, and they've got nice fixtures coming up. Odegaard, I think at 8.5 million is a good price when you compare him to Saka, but the returns so far have not really been coming his way. And Hyung Min Son played brilliantly, I think, in game week two. Is still that Tottenham Hotspur talisman and I think provides value at 10 million. Over the next three game weeks, again, it's mostly the big guys involved, to be honest. Salah, Eze, Palmer, Saka, De Bruyne, Son and Foden. To be honest, I can't really say any more about these players. I think they're all really, really good. And there's very little in it, I guess, in the expected points, particularly between those sort of bottom four players there. Saka, De Bruyne, Son and Foden. I mean, yeah, there's very much little in it in terms of expected points for upcoming game weeks. I think they're all great and you could equally buy them all. Forwards then, I mean, I guess there's no real surprise to see Erling Haaland at number one here. Off the back, of course, of a hat-trick against Ipswich in game week two. He's in very good stead in all the expected points, bookies, algorithms, etc. He's really high up and obviously a really good option. He's got West Ham in game week three. Isaac, been a little bit disappointing to start the season, I must say. Not quite lived up to the hype at 57% ownership, more than Haaland is at the moment, but can't deny he's going to be a good option. I think it's only a matter of time before Newcastle get a penalty or something like that where he's got a chance of scoring and getting off the mark. Havertz, 
8.1 million I do think is quite expensive for the potential that he provides. I, I've never thought he's actually all that good in this game. I've never considered him really for my team, but he's still up there in terms of expected points. The third best forward for game week three. And we got Wisser, Watkins, Nicholas Jackson off the back of a pretty good game against Wolves. Watkins just about to enter a really good fixture run with Aston Villa off the back of missing a bit of a sitter, unfortunately, against Arsenal. And then Chris Wood. He always seems to be in the mix, but I just question his minutes with the forwards and options that Nottingham Forest have. And I don't actually think Forest are all that good from an attacking perspective. So yeah, those are the top forwards for Game Week 3. For the next three game weeks, this is what it looks like. We've got Haaland again at number one. No real surprise. He's probably, to be honest, going to be the top forward for every game week you see here. Unless maybe he's playing Arsenal. Isaac, Watkins, Havertz, Jackson... Muniz and Mateta are also up there in the mix for the best forwards over the next three game weeks. I, To be honest, I can't really, other than Havertz, who I've sort of said my piece on, I can't really say that any of these are bad picks. Even Nicholas Jackson, considering the fixture run that Chelsea have, he could actually be a good pick as well. All right then, a quick look at the clean sheet odds, and these are courtesy of Drafthound. Again, I will leave a link in the description to Drafthound if you wanted to sign up for yourself. The top teams, well, the top five teams to keep a clean sheet in game week two, according to draft time, you've got Arsenal on 48%, Man City on 40 Villa, Chelsea and Brentford. I going to say Crystal Palace, then it's Chelsea. They're on 38 and 36 respectively. And then you've got Nottingham Forest on 33 Usually, any team's kind of below 30% to keep a clean sheet. I always kind of say you should probably be a bit hesitant to start defenders from those teams. But ultimately, you might not have complete choice to do that. No teams this week, unlike last week, that are over 50% to keep a clean sheet, but I'd back Arsenal personally to be able to keep a clean sheet against anyone, and Man City could well do it against West I mean, all of those top five and Nottingham Forest I, I mentioned could possibly keep a clean sheet, to be honest. But like I said, anything below 30, I'd be a little bit hesitant starting defenders from. I'm going to go through a few sources of expected points data then for captaincy. Fantasy Football Hub up first. We just looked through those for the top players. Haaland is number one, 7.3 expected points, although him and Salah are still close. Salah on seven, Saka 6.8, Palmer 6.8, Isaac 6.7, and Eze is actually up there as well on 6.2. So there's not a whole lot in it between all of these players. There's six players on this list with basically one expected points between them all. I personally think the best captain is Haaland, but Fantasy Football Hub is saying it's close. We've got Draft Town up next then, and Haaland is number one on there too, but a much bigger margin this time. 9.9 .9 expected points compared to Salah on 7.3, Son on 6.6, .6, Saka 6.4, De Bruyne on 6.3, and then Jota on 5.4. So Haaland is, according to Draft Town at least, way, way above any other player for expected points. And then FPL Review finally also has Haaland as their number one option, but it's close, similar to what we saw with Fantasy Football Hub, and it actually has Mbumo up there as an option as well that I actually really quite like. Haaland again, though, according to FPL Review, is the best captain for Game Week 3. I just wanted to talk next about some teams that I think are worth targeting. I, I spoke about a fair few of these teams in my buy and avoid video, but ultimately when you're talking about players to buy, I think you want to be buying players from teams that have a good run of fixtures and that's kind of where I'm going with this. What I've done here is I've combined clean sheet odds according to Draft Hound with projected goals according to another sort of FPL data source in Elevenify. So Man City, apart from that Arsenal game, and even then, that could well be a nil-nil, right? That tends to be a scoreline that you do see in those big games occasionally. They've got really good, I would say, fixtures from a goal scoring and probably defensive perspective for the next five. West Ham, Brentford, Arsenal, Newcastle, Fulham for them. You know, all in and around above 30% to keep a clean sheet in all of those games. And then projected goals, apart from the Arsenal one, they're above two. And in basically half of the games, they're above two and a half projected goals, which when it comes to projected goal charts for Premier League teams is really, really high. So I'd say Man City both defensively, you know, some of their assets, I'd say the main one at the moment really being Rico Lewis and probably Guardiola as well. Exactly how long Rico Lewis stays in the team, I guess, remains to be seen, but he's earned his place so far. Got the likes of Foden due back, Kevin De Bruyne, who's in the team at the moment, and of course, Erling Haaland. You know, those are the kinds of players I'd be targeting from Man City. And then Chelsea, off the back of a 6-2 win against Wolves. They might have even scored another goal by the time that I'm recording this video, but they do look... Well, they did look good in that game. And their next five fixtures are really nice. I would say they're playing... Apart from possibly the Brighton team, you know, bottom sort of half of the league team, sort of mid-table, 
Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, West Ham, Brighton, Nottingham Forest. That's a really nice run of fixtures. And clean sheet odds wise as well kind of proves it. Most games, apart from the Brighton one, they're above 30% to keep a clean sheet. And the projected goals are also really good in. A majority of those games are expected to score over two. The big question with Chelsea, of course, is, is who is actually playing for them? Madawike's just scored a hat-trick against Wolves, but he didn't start against Man City. He probably starts in game week three, though. And then what if he has a bad game there? He could get dropped again. Realistically, the only probably few Chelsea players I really like the look of at the moment. I'd say Cucurella seems to have nailed down that left-back spot. Levi Colwell seems to be favoured uh, in defence. Cole Palmer, obviously, the absolute talisman of the team. is pictured on this slide here. I think he's a really good option. 10.5 is quite expensive for him, but I do think you're going to get good value with the returns he gets. And actually, Nicholas Jackson looks like he is going to play regularly for Chelsea. Enzo Maresca seems to like him in that centre-forward position. So yeah, that's probably your best Chelsea picks that you could go for. And I also really quite like the Aston Villa fixtures as well. They've got Leicester, Everton, Wolves, Ipswich and Man United. I would suggest those first four are pretty good defensively. And then Man United, I would back Villa to score against them as well, to be honest. I've not been all that impressed with Man United. Looking at the projected goals, again, a bit of a trend with the teams that I'm showing, but genuinely they're in and around two projected goals per game. We all know the kind of good Aston Villa assets, right? I do like Martinez in goal. I think his clean sheet odds for the next five are good. And he's also got good opportunities, I think, to keep a good amount or make a good amount of saves. Concert in defence is probably the most nailed on defender and only 4.5 million. I quite like John McGinn. Tielemans... I think it's between those two and maybe Ollie Watkins as to who takes the Villa penalty. But penalties. If you remember back to last season, there was a point in time where Douglas Louise was an actual pickable FPL option because he took penalties for Aston Villa. So if it isn't Watkins that takes the penalties, one of those guys could be could well be a decent option as well. You've got Morgan Rogers in there at five million as well. He's just absolutely brilliant. Looked fantastic against Arsenal. I think he's one of the first names on that Aston Villa team sheet now for five million. Leon Bailey looks pretty good as well at 6.5, making sure to correct, correct how I pronounce his name. And then Ollie Watkins as well is going to be a really good option. Look at those games, right? You've got to think Villa put some goals past the four teams they're playing coming up. Considering as well as how poorly some of them have been playing, Everton and Wolves particularly, you know, those games could be pretty good for Aston Villa goals. So yeah, those are the three teams I'd probably be looking to target over the next few. All right, and that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully gave you quite a lot to think about there in getting ready for game week three. I'll still have plenty more videos coming out this week to get you ready, but yeah, that's all the kind of stats, expected points, captaincy kind of data I think you need to see. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a like rating. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree with anything I've had to say there in terms of player picks. And you can subscribe to the Golden Goal channel, which should be just there on your screen. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in my next video.